Hey everybody, welcome to the Everything Money channel with Seth and Paul. We're here to analyze investment, stocks, all forms of investing, money, money growth, business development. Paul, the expert here, is going to tell us tell us about his thoughts on what a cap rate is. I know it's a confusing, sort of a confusing term. I have no idea, so I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. But join us right now as Paul describes what a cap rate is. But first, we will have a moment of likeness. Please smash that like button yeah! so that Paul can pay me and Don more money. And we analyze the likes and bring you more b- better content uh, it, to see what you guys, guys and gals like out there. So, Paul, take it away. What is the cap rate? All right. So cap rate's a very important uh, metric in real estate. From a simple standpoint, cap rate is the profit or net income of the property divided by the price of the property. So as an example... If you buy a property and in the year it profits $80,000 and you pay a million dollars for it, your cap rate is 8%. That makes sense? Yep. So this basically means if you paid cash for the property, not including any appreciation, you'd make 8% per year on your money. It's a very simple metric from that standpoint, but here's how it gets a little confusing for people. As the cap rate... When you're buying a property, you want to buy at a higher cap rate. When you're selling a property, you want to buy, you want to sell at a lower cap rate. I'm, confu- now, I'm why confused is that? already. Yes. Keep okay. Going. What was that? Say that again, Seth. I'm confused already. Keep All right. Going. So this is a very confusing thing. And I'm going to try to break it down very simply. Let's say that same property makes eighty thousand dollars a year. What you can use then is you sit there and say. If you pay 1.5 million, 1.6 million for it, you're getting a 5% cap rate, a 5% return. So if you remember that the the cap rate is the return you get if you pay cash, the lower cap rate means a lower return. How do you get a lower return? By paying more money for it. If you if you take that same property and you pay 800,000 for it, you have a 10% cap rate or a 10% return, lower price, higher cap rate. So when you're buying it, you want to buy at a lower price, which gives you a higher cap rate. When you're selling it, you want to sell at a higher price, which gives you a lower cap rate. Basically, you're giving the next buyer that cap rate. Correct. The next buyer is paying the higher price and getting the lower return. Seems plausible. This is good. Right. So... What other things can affect these numbers? What if I somehow drum up more income with the property? Boom. That's exactly it. So right now in this market, we're seeing a lot of, I shouldn't have erased that. That's okay. We're seeing a lot of really low cap rates. What drives cap rates? Interest rate. So if you think about it, if you're making an 8% return and you're buying an 8% cap rate, if you're paying interest of 6%, you're basically making a spread of 2%. You're borrowing at six, you're making eight. Does that make sense? Your spread is two. So if you're always happy making 2%, what happens if the interest rate goes to 4%? If you want to make make a 2% spread, you need to buy at a 6% cap. So remember, if your cap rate goes down, what happens to your price? Your price goes up. So you can pay more money for the property and still make your spread because of the interest rates going down. Same point, if interest rates go up, let's say interest rates go to 8%, you still need to make your 2% spread, you now have to buy at a 10% cap rate, so the price will go down. So over time, as interest rates have gone up, if you look at history in the early 80s, cap rates were very high. Recently, since, since interest rates are really low, cap rates are very low, a lot lower. So interest rates are the biggest fluctuator of cap rates because you're borrowing you can't. You shouldn't be borrowing at a higher rate, of, a higher interest rate than your cap rate pays, because then you're losing money essentially. Now, what you asked earlier, Seth, was what happens? How can you pay a lower cap rate? I have bought properties at four and five percent cap rates, which is a very low inter- cap rate, very high price. But that's because I could drive income up a lot. So let's say I buy a property that generates eighty thousand dollars a year, and I pay. million for it. 5% cap rate, like before. That's terrible. However, let's say I know the property 
next day, I know I can increase rents and profit and make that same property make $120,000 a year. Now, on my original purchase price of a million six, that is a 7.5% cap rate. Does this increase does this increase in revenue include money you put into it to make it more For right more valuable? Now, now, right now, I'm not going to worry about that. That's a different conversation altogether. Okay. And we'll talk about that. But if I know my most, my biggest, my best return ever, I bought the property and the next day we increased rents by 40%. Just because the previous owner just didn't know the market. They didn't know what they could increase rents to. So what are some other ways we can get this number from 80 to 120? So one other way is putting money in the property, which is a separate video altogether. Yeah. But driving, you can cut expenses or increase rent. That's how you get profit to go up, right? Only two ways. Increase revenue, decrease expenses. Those are the two ways you increase the profit. So if I can figure out a way that I can increase revenue or decrease expenses enough to increase my profit by $40,000, i am going to increase my cap rate, and I'm going to get a higher return on my property. Now, let's say the market for this property is still 5%. Now that $120,000 in profit... Now that $120,000 in profit divided by the 5% return equals $2.4 million in value. So I paid $1.6 for it. I increased the profit to $120,000. Now my property is worth $2.4 million at the same 5% cap rate. Do it again. I took the $80,000. I made the profit one hundred twenty. dollars If I want to sell the property at the same 5% cap rate I bought it at, I would divide by 5% because I want to sit there and see how, what is my return? How does my profit and my return work together? I had to, I had to sell it for $2.4 million to get somebody the 5% return. 120 divided by 2.4 is 5%. So I've increased the value of my property by 50% as well. So if the next buyer paid 2.4 for the same property? But with the higher in- profit, they're still getting that 5% return. Okay. So these are how cap rates work. It can be confusing. It will be confusing. My recommendation is to just keep working on the equation. Oh, I can't do more screens. That sucks. The full equation is NOI divided by price equals cap rate. Now remember, cross multiply. NOI divided by cap rate equals price. You use these together to figure out the price you want to pay or the cap rate you're getting. If you know this, if you know two of these, you'll always be able to figure out the rest. Use these to always figure out where you are in your deal. And it's 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 a wonderful, there's so many things about cap rates that can be affected. Is the market, is the market you're in going to have faster rent growth? If you're going to have faster rent growth, your price, your NOI is going to go fat, fat, high. Your NOI is going to increase faster. So therefore you might be willing to pay more money for that property and therefore get a lower cap rate. So all these things are important to understand with cap rate. They can be very confusing. And as long as you understand these two equations and how they work together, you'll be fine. Are all cap rates made equal? No. Like I was saying, if you're in a market, let's say, for example, um, no, let's do this one. Apartment building versus office. So my personal opinion I'm willing to pay a lower cap rate for apartments, which means I'm willing to pay more price for the same dollar of profit than office building. And the reason being is this. Oops. In apartments, I can rehab. I can... um, Reduce staff? I can, well, I can do reduce staff. In a bad economy, people still have to live somewhere. Economic certainty is better. With office, I can't do any rehab. Rehab in office, it, it doesn't. If I rehab my office, I'm not going to get that much more in rent. I can't double, triple my income. Uh-huh. It's harder to increase profit in office than it is in apartments. That's why I am willing. To, that's why I like apartments more, and that's why I need a I need a higher cap rate for me to do an office. Deal. So you're willing, you're willing to pay more money for the same return in, using in apartments apartment. as opposed to an office? Yes, because I have more potential in that property. Look at it right now. Look at office right now. We just had a big shutdown. What are people saying about office buildings? They're not needed anymore. Malls, retail, all that stuff. They're, not, they're, yeah. they're going to be harder to fill. Therefore, the profit's going to go lower. And when profit goes lower, you get hurt. With apartments, we're not hearing about apartments. Now, with that said, 
apartments back in the day, 08, 09, they built so many that there was an influx of apartment inventory. So when all of a sudden the recession hit, rents did go down and affected this. But, this, but office was affected more. Office is much more affected by economics than, the, than, than a residential, in my opinion. And it's not a blanket statement. It's just a general statement that we can sit there and look at every different time period. But right now, that's why I like apartments more, and that's why I'm willing to pay a lower cap rate. When you're looking at real estate to buy, what is the general cap rate that you like? Five, eight, ten? That's a great question. So the general cap rate I like for apartment buildings that I buy, if it has rehab potential, so rehab potential apartments... I want to buy in the 5.5 to 7% cap rate range. It all depends on the upside of that rehab. Like I bought our best deal ever at a 5% cap rate. Our best deal we ever did, I bought at a 5% cap rate, even lower than this metric. And it's, our, it's a property we get 40% returns on. Why? Because it had so much upside potential. If I'm buying a stabilized property, now what's a stabilized property? One that is already full I don't need to do anything to it. I don't need to rehab it. The problem is I don't buy these very often because they need less work, so they're easier, and the people will pay more. I want to buy around 6.5 to 7.5. And in this market, that's very difficult because people want to pay through the nose, and they all think they can get more rents, et cetera. So for one that has not much upside, I have to pay less money for it, pay a higher cap rate. With cap rates in these ranges, why wouldn't you just invest the money somewhere else like the stock market that has proven to give a, a better yearly? Well, now we're getting into the conversation of debt and how we use debt to make money. Ah, of course. My, so right. next video we'll use is how do we use debt and leverage to make money in real estate and get above average returns? Because Seth, you're right. I know people, these um, asshole cousins of mine in California, they buy, uh, they buy retail at four or 5% caps and they pay cash and they're getting four to 5% return on their money. And they love it. They're like, oh yeah, we're paid in cash. I'm like, yeah, but you're getting shit returns. So that's a conversation to have about why debt is useful for real estate. Like the but like, you must hit the, like the video. Sm- or- smash the like button below. Follow the Everything Money channel. You'll get more content like this from the wizard of numbers and finance and real estate. Dr. Shannon. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for joining my podcast. And drop a comment on if you have any questions about this cap rate stuff. It does get confusing. We are very active. We respond as they come very in. Active. We respond daily. And in the end, if you are interested in real estate or you have an aunt who's coming off real estate, you better call Paul. I want to buy your aunt's property as she is um, sitting there saying this property sucks. It's taking up too much of my time. I need to find That's somebody. That's why I'm doing this. You better call Paul. Thanks for joining us on the Everything Money channel. See you guys.